in our hearts. I'm here to introduce to you my radical host, Chaplain Minister Rabbi Ted the Great, who I teamed up with several years ago because when he approached me and asked me for help, there was a divine, there was something that I could not explain. And although I was seeking help at the time, I could not say no to him. So I told him, I will think about it and get back to you. I had no clue who this young man was. And as I continued my conversation with him, I said, oh my God. At one point, I remember asking him, I said, who are you? Are you the king? I don't get it. Are you Marcus Garvey? Are you Malcolm X? Because when he speaks, there is something about him that commands your attention. And I said to you, this young man is someone to be reckoned with and someone you need to know. When he told me about his accolades, and this is a young man who will not speak about accolades, because he's about doing God's mission. He's about helping people. He's about reaching people wherever they are, in the shelter, in the prison. It doesn't matter. He goes into the dark holes, and he seeks them out. He goes into the community. And he do his research. And this is one reason why our honorees are here today, because he did the research. And he thinks it will well serve him. Because we believe while you are alive, people must acknowledge you for your hard work. There are some people out there who are doing nothing and they're getting federal grants and city grants and you cannot see what they're doing. And they walk around talking about youths, youths, youths. And the youths are out of control. With this man, he have the ability. And I tell you, when you hear me, you all are in for a treat because he is awesome. He's passionate about what he does. And if you want to know, story, you might be, you not might be, you will be surprised because people think he's a humanitarian artist. He doesn't think about himself. So you, you know his life story, it will bring tears to your eyes. So when I sat with him and he went through a lot of things that he does, things that he's done in the tri-state, in the different states, and especially in Chicago. I know a lot of you might have heard of a program called READ. And everywhere you go, you see the word READ. And nobody knows what it is. It's not effective. Our youths are not paying attention. And when he told me he was the person behind that program, that green program, that made it into the White House when Bush was there. But because he was young, he was black, and a male, he was overlooked. was Miss Reed. He had told the Chicago housing developments, the parks, the educational system. He went to the White House and he spoke about the educational system. And he looked early Duncan in his face and said to him, you're not 
doing your job. He called the press conference when he was smart enough back then, so young, to recall that conversation. So, ladies and gentlemen, I bring before you this afternoon because what I am doing, I am introducing him to the Tri-State area. We are doing this work on an international level. And what he has done in Chicago and the other states, I want him to do the same and more for New York Tri-State area. Because this is a man with a passion and he has the ability on what we are doing. It's transforming the way leaders do business. We are not afraid to call you out. And we will stand if you're not doing what you're supposed to do and tell you, do your work. So with no further ado, I would like to bring Rapid Date Chaplain Otis to the podium. And, and I would like to welcome everybody. You know, Lord God, I just wanna, I wanna thank the mighty all right. Yeah, stand up for the sister, cause she, she worked hard and with me to, to bring this whole piece together, the vision of God. Come on, give it up for give it up for human trafficking, domestic violence disorder. I give you this, not as a symbol, God said worship him, worship no other God. Not a hand of a crafty, crafty man. But he did say give him the glory. And I come to give God all the glory. But I want to also thank him for the glory that you allow him to manifest in you to be utilized to help head spear these great women and love of these women that you hardly knew his son that you have known and soldier with me with. So I give you these wings as a remembrance of God that when everyone tear you down, backstab, slap you in your face, say to your friends, just carry the word of God. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God and it became flesh when you put it in your country. So I want to say congratulations, sister. Keep champion for God. She ain't champion for me. She champion for the one that sent me. She champion for the one that I'm champion for. And that is only God. And I thank you, sister. This is yours. We thank you so dearly. And I'm going to be obedient. I'm going to turn this back over to the women of God. And I want to just thank you. I love you. And be patient with us. I'm going to come with a performance, but I want the sisters to begin to be able to move forward. In Jesus' name, we pray this. Amen. Child. 
When I look around and I see things wrong, I know I have to speak out. And sometimes people say to me, now I give it to you when I get in trouble. And I said to them, well, you know what? If I'm going to get in trouble for speaking the truth or doing things right, guess what? I'm ready to suffer the consequences. I've done that all my life. And I listened to my peers or even family members said to me, Margarita, don't. My mother said to me, you are so stubborn. You just won't listen. But I know as a child, there was something inside of me and I cannot explain it. But I know it's divine because the things that I do, ordinary people don't. And when I tell people my story, well, I should say story, stories, Many women out there, 
that they are so afraid to speak up on the issues because of the way you were brought up.